Good morning. Welcome to the Q and A. My name is Michael Andrews, and it is a delight to welcome you wherever you are watching in the world right now. Well, you might be joining us off the back of our Christmas concert, The Christmas Story, where we welcomed Glenn Scrivener. And Glenn Scrivener shared a very special message about COVID not being able to cancel Christmas. And indeed, COVID can't cancel the truth that the light shines in the darkness. That's the claim of Christianity. And for all of you who might be exploring Christianity further and asking questions about its truth and its relevance to your life, we'd love to particularly welcome you this morning. And many of you sent in questions for Glenn to answer during that live streamed concert in December. And unfortunately, due to time restraints, we weren't able to answer them all. So we thought we'd hold a question and answer session in January 2021. So here we are. And it's a delight to be able to welcome our special guests this morning, Melinda Hendry and Rico Tice, who are going to tackle some more of those questions that you forwarded into us via WhatsApp, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. So without further ado, let me welcome Rico and Melinda. Hello, Melinda and Rico. Lovely to have you with Morning. us. And um, uh, Rico, Rico, you've been on the staff at All Souls, haven't you, for a number of years, and uh, married to Lucy with th three children. Yeah, that's are you, right. How are you doing with all of the homeschooling in light of the lockdown? Yes, I think the, the, the word in Christian jargon would be sanctifying, Michael, sanctifying as we try and manage it. That, that my two oldest boys are, are, are OK, but the, the, the joker in the pack is my five year old daughter called Mercy. And of course, it means I'm going around the house screaming, Mercy! <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so, yeah. Brilliant. Anyway, if you're homeschooling as well, then can I tell you, my heart goes out to you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Rico. And uh, we're delighted to be joined by Melinda as well, Melinda Hendry, uh, who's from Boston, Massachusetts, and is married to a Welshman. I mean, we, all, we almost didn't invite you, Rico, being an English rugby fan, but uh, mm. we've invited Melinda. Um, and uh, Melinda, you've just written a really interesting paper, haven't you, on someone called Bonhoeffer. Can you tell us a little bit about what you've been writing about for your master's? Yeah, I've just been looking at Bonhoeffer and what he has to say about prayer, both his understanding of prayer, but then his practice of prayer as well. It's been, yeah, fascinating stuff. And who was he, Melinda? Who was Bonhoeffer? Well, Bonhoeffer, I guess he's, uh, he's a, a pastor and a theologian, um, but I guess most people know him as a, as a leader during, um, during Nazi Germany. He was, uh, he was killed in a concentration camp uh, for his role in a plot to assassinate Hitler. Incredible. Um, well, thank you so much for uh, joining uh, today to answer some questions that um, people have sent in to us. And uh, for those of you watching, we're going to be playing a, a great piece of music later on as well from singer-songwriter Stuart Townend. But before that, um, let's uh, see if we can answer some of these uh, questions that you've been sending in to us. Um, and... Uh, Let's start with this question. I know we're off the back of Christmas. Christmas time is over, but um, as uh, these questions have come in from the Christmas story, we do have a couple of Christmassy questions. Um, we've got this question from Sue Bow, which I think I came in from Facebook. She's asked, um, please explain the virgin birth. How can we understand what happened in, in the gospel accounts with the uh, virgin birth. Uh, Rico, what would you... Well, let, let me throw that to Melinda. Melinda, what, what happened and why is it significant? Let me ask. Well, I think it, it's a great question because actually there is real mystery when it comes to the virgin birth. Uh, how it exactly happens, uh, it's really hard to describe the mechanics and logistics of it. Because what we know from scripture is that the conception of Jesus doesn't happen by natural means. Uh, it, is a, it is a divine event in which uh, this baby is created in the womb of Mary uh, without uh, the normal means of, of conception. Uh, and I think probably more of what we can say is, is really around the significance of the virgin birth. 
uh, I think there's an, a number of things it says to us. The first is, is that uh, this baby is uh, both human and divine. Mm -hmm. uh, he is knit together in the womb. He is uh, a human person, and yet he is, he is God incarnate. Uh, and I, I think there's also something here that in this baby, uh, in the person of Jesus, God is doing something absolutely brand new uh, in our world. Uh, and he is, he's, this is the beginning of a, of a new creation where, and it's through this person, Jesus, that God is going to put everything to right and bring this world into a, 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 a new place. That's, you know, Glenn started to touch upon how, you know, COVID can't cancel Christmas. And I just wonder, you know, that, that message of Jesus coming into the world, Rico, what does that mean to, you know, for people watching and maybe feeling a bit isolated this week in the face of lockdown? What does that message really mean? Why, does, why, why do Christians talk about it being hopeful? Well, uh, uh, my dear brother, you know, if, if you think that your problem is COVID and lockdown, can I tell you the name Jesus tells me that's not your biggest problem. The name Jesus means that uh, when the angel says to Joseph in a dream, you'll give him the name Jesus because he'll save his people from their sins. So the very name is his job description. And when Jesus comes, he comes to save us from our sin. Now that I'm sure from COVID we've seen works out horizontally with others. Certainly I've not lived as I should or behaved as I should, but above all how I've related to God. And that's my biggest problem. I've not treated God as God and Jesus comes to put me right with God by dying on the cross. And the moment he's born, that's what he's going to be doing. He's going to be heading towards the cross. So his very name uh, reveals the meaning of Christmas, which is that we need to be forgiven. And I guess when people, um, you know, are, are anxious about health and job security and all sorts of things, there, there, is that, there is that hope, isn't there, of the Christian message that actually knowing when you put your faith and trust in Jesus, there is this eternal um, security that you can have a relationship with God. Yeah, it's amazing, Michael. What Jesus enables me to do is enter a story where... The last thing is never the worst thing. So, I mean, we've had three people from the church family at All Souls die in the last week from COVID. It is very hard, but with each of them and their families, they know that there's hope in Christ. And that's just the most wonderful thing. And so when I come to faith in Christ, I enter a story where I'm, I'm heading to, just as God has made this world, a new creation. And the guarantee of it is what Jesus did on Good Friday and Easter Day. So you're right, there'll be loads of things that are there. But the Bible's metaphor about this is that when I come to Jesus, I move from sinking sand to the rock. And I'm now on the rock of Jesus. And it means I know where I'm going. I know I can be forgiven. And as you say, I can ask Jesus by his Holy Spirit to come and be with me in the midst of, you know, huge issues. Thanks, Rico. That's, that's really helpful. Uh, we're going to take a different question now from... Um... Uh, one viewer from the Philippines, and um, we've, we've had to translate the question into English, but I think the gist of the question that someone's asked is, um, why can Christians sometimes come across as being judgmental? And, um, you know, perhaps people, some people watching might have had an experience with a, a Christian friend and, and almost have turned off by Christianity. Uh, Melinda, what, what would you say to someone who's, who's perhaps experienced that kind of situation? Mm. Well, I think Christians can sometimes be <laughs> judgmental. I know it's uh, something I've had to repent of myself uh, mm -hmm. at, at different times. And I guess what I would, would, would want to say is, is look at the person of Jesus. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I, I think as Christians, we, we are not perfect people and we get things wrong sometimes. Uh, sometimes we might be saying the right thing, but with the wrong tone. Um, sometimes we might be saying the wrong thing with the right tone. Um, so I, I'd want to go back to the person of Jesus, uh, who is perfect truth and perfect love, yeah. and, and explore what, who Jesus is, um, and to explore him for yourself. And, and Michael, if, you know, just to add to that, just to say... The qualification for being Christian is not, are you good enough, but are you bad enough? Christianity is for bad people that need rescue. 
and so you know really judgmentalism isn't shouldn't be part part of where we are um jesus himself said um you know uh, on hearing this jesus said to them this is one of the parables where jesus is feasting with a tax collector and 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 and, and with with prostitutes who who are seen as sinners by the religious authorities and when he's condemned for doing it he says this it's not the healthy who need a doctor but those who are ill i've not come to call the righteous but sinners mm-hmm. so the qualification for being christian is saying i'm a sinner i need forgiveness yeah. so if you've experienced so-called christians who've been pointing the finger and being intolerant can i just say i'm so sorry i really apologize for that but please look at jesus but let me warn you as you look at jesus and you see his holiness then you'll see the need for forgiveness (laughs) so you know coming to jesus is 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 wonderful because you're forgiven but uncomfortable because like peter we say get away from me i'm a sinful man i mean i you know, he, his perfection shows how much I need him. That's really helpful. Um, uh, one person has sent us in a question um, from Bolton, and they've asked, why is Christianity not easy? Why is it so hard? Well, it's, a, a, yeah, another really good question. I guess I would say that when you become a Christian, you're in the process of becoming who God has originally created you to be. And we are sinful, fallen people being made new um, by God's spirit. And when I come to Christ, there is, there is a, there's a real battle that's going on. Um, I have been made new in Jesus uh, and I am becoming this person that God has always created me to be. Uh, but I still have this old self <laughs> that I am in, that is, is dying and I am having to die to every day. And I think that's what makes Christianity a, a, a battle. This, this old broken self uh, is still active and it's still squirming around <laughs> inside of me. Um, and so I think that's what can make Christianity feel um, really difficult at times. Um, but what we are promised is that this, this spirit, that, that the spirit that God pours into us uh, is helping us in that process of becoming new. And so when I'm in that battle, the strength to, to fight is not within me, but it's in, it's in God's power and God's spirit, um, which is an amazing thing. So that there is always progress in the Christian faith, even if it, if it might not feel easy at the time. Yeah, and, and I guess at the moment with COVID, I, I don't think life's easy for almost everybody. You know, life's not easy. Um, the Bible tells us that because of sin, we're in a broken, fallen world. But we can head towards the light, which is Jesus. And actually, I, I found it wonderful when I was a, my godfather was killed in a cliff fall. And a maths teacher told me that because Christ rose from the dead, I could have hope in the face of death. And it was amazing to run towards the light, towards him. But Again, it's sometimes not easy because there are people, the Bible says, who love darkness. They don't want the light. And so you're in opposition to those people. Although, as Melinda says, you're battling the darkness in yourself as well. So it it is hard. But can I tell you, in in this pandemic, where would I be without the Lord Jesus? I've woken up sometimes in the last six months. And I've honestly thought, I just don't know where I'd be if I didn't have his spirit within me, the hope within me, the knowledge that the cross could forgive me so that I could then ask my wife for forgiveness for losses of temper. I just don't know where I'd be if I didn't have the Lord Jesus. But it doesn't mean it's easy because there's a sinful nature. And um, the Bible does say a lot of people love darkness. They don't want to go near Jesus because he doesn't allow us to live as we want to live. He says we're in God's world. We need to submit to his authority. Thanks both. Um... We're going to jump onto a question. Let's have a look. Um, it's quite fun, Michael, because I sense you're doing an accent from whenever you get the question from. I'm waiting for you to get <laughs> one from South Africa or from, <laughs> one from America or from Ireland. I'm tempted. I'm tempted, but I won't, I won't yeah. go there. Um, I'd, like, I'd, I'd like, like to say, everyone, that Michael does an impression of me that causes great merriment on the staff. And I, you know, I don't trust him. I don't trust him. <laughs> Sorry, Rico. Yeah, yeah, no, I won't do it. No. Um, <laughs> uh, 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 well, 
talking about uh, different places around the world, let's go to Italy. Um, Elizabeth from Italy is, um, she's been looking into the, the Magi and the wise men and she's, um, she's just wondering if we could tell us a little, if we could tell her a little bit more about um, perhaps what the meaning of the wise men in the story is, what were they looking for and um, yeah, why, why do we get told about them? Well, it's a great question. And the Magi are so symbolic. First of all, we absolutely be, believe this is historic, that there was a star that they, that they followed. So they're not pretend, although we see them on uh, Christmas cards. They were, they were real people who, who came um, and, 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 you know, realized that this star announced an incredibly significant event. Um, but what do they symbolize in, mix, in Luke's gospel? They symbolize that Jesus has come from the, for the world. They've come from 500 miles away. Um, I think they're from Iran. Is that right, Melinda? I don't. I think they were. They originated in Iraq or Iran. That they. They. It's felt they came from there. But Luke is saying the outsider is coming. That someone from a totally different culture is coming to this light of the world. This Lord Jesus. This baby. So they're they're wonderfully symbolic. Yeah, and I guess their gifts are symbolic as well, aren't they, Melinda? What, 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 can you remind us what those, what those are? Why, does, um, why do they feature in the story and, and point forwards as well? Yeah, so I guess they traditionally come with gold, frankincense and, and myrrh. And uh, I guess particularly the, the, some of their gifts are, about, uh, are for a king. Um, mm -hmm. but, but particularly the frankincense and the myrrh really point forward to... Uh, to Jesus's death. So here, right in the beginning of Jesus's life, in his first few years, uh, here's foreshadowing of, of how his life will end, or his life here on earth will end. It will end in crucifixion. And so they bring him in gifts that point forward to that. Uh, and that's, that, that is, uh, it, it doesn't, the, the gifts don't just tell us about who Jesus is and what he's worthy of. Um, but they tell us something about why he has come. Mm. And he has come, as Rico said, uh, in order to save us. It's, yeah. Jesus is, is God's primary rescue plan uh, for broken lives and for a broken world. And um, so it's, it's, it, you can only, you can just imagine Mary actually and Joseph as these uh, three magi come with these gifts, how they must have interpreted it and what they must have thought was, yeah. was coming. Um, for this baby. We've talked about um, God's rescue plan and um, and I, it just leads me to think of, of one question we've received from someone in London who uh, was watching a story on the BBC about um, someone called Pastor Mick who, who used to be a drug dealer, has come to faith, um, his life has been turned around um, and he, he's put his faith in, in Jesus uh, and that's impacted his life in every possible way. He knows he's a sinner and he's been saved um, by God's grace uh, and forgiveness. Um, one of the, the question that's come off the back of that for one viewer is, um, why, if God exists and is powerful and good, but why does he not intervene to stop uh, bad things from happening? Um, they, they see God working in some people's lives um, and question why does why why does it appear as though God doesn't necessarily jump into the world and, uh, and solve every problem that that there is? Uh, Rico, how, what would you say to that to that viewer? Well, just to say, I, I think the best reason not to be a Christian is the problem of evil and of suffering. You know, you 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 do see the the, the carnage of this world, and you think, well, you know, how can God be all loving and all powerful? But what I mustn't do is um, cause what I don't understand. And often I don't understand. I have to tell you why that, you know, there is such terrible suffering. But I mustn't let that stop me understanding what I do understand, which is that God has sent his son and that I think it's historically proven that he raised his son from the dead. And that that is the proof that there will one day be a new world without any pain or suffering. Because the only thing you can say to a child who's dying of bone cancer is one day you'll have a new body in a new world where there'll be no more pain or suffering. Now, at that point, you can all handle it because, you know, you're not having to wait long until you, you're, there's a day of reunion. That's what I've said about four or five times in the last week to those who've lost loved ones here at All Souls from COVID. 
Mm. So what I'm saying is, yes, when I look at this suffering, there are times when I say, Lord, what is happening? I just don't understand. But I'm not going to let that stop me going, gosh, he died on Good Friday for me to be forgiven. He rose on Easter Day. And that's the promise that I'll be pulled through like a, you know, rather, rather like a, you know, a, 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 a uh, let me do it. a pen here is is pulled through with a with 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 a thread behind it i'll be pulled through to the day of resurrection into a new creation and then i can say oh, oh gosh i look back on that suffering but you know it was a bit of fluff compared to now because now we're forever in a place without sin when i can see the lord jesus face to face and where the bible says that there are there are 12 seasons a, 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 a year that it, it's a place of such such wonder and fruitfulness it is it is great isn't it the hope for people that put their trust in jesus is 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 that actually one day you you come before god's throne and god's compassion for the hurt that that, that the world has gone through and and bear in mind you know we we're, we're we're sinful people and the world is fallen as a result of that but he steps down and wipes every tear from his people's mm-hmm. eyes that's the promise isn't it yeah. i mean melinda it, it, it is real hope isn't it for people that are going through the toughest of times when you put your trust in jesus there's there's real foundations there to face the hard things of life isn't that i think that's absolutely right and 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 what's more than that is that we have a god who intimately understands our suffering he isn't he doesn't stand far off from it and he isn't aloof and he's not untouched by it um but what the incarnation you know the birth of jesus what his death and resurrection tells me is that he has chosen the path of suffering uh, in order to bring this world into a new creation, like Rico's been talking about. Uh, And that's both a a wonderful hope for the future, but there's also something for me now that says, in my moments of suffering, I have a God who understands it from the inside, Mm. uh, who's walking with me in it, uh, and who can relate to me in the midst of my suffering as well. And I... You know, that, that's just what's so unique about the Christian story is the God who chooses suffering himself uh, and who then relates to us in the midst of it. Thanks, Melinda. And, and obviously it's on the cross that he, that he suffers for, for our sins. Uh, Rico, what happens at the cross? Why is that such a central part of, of the Christian faith? For people watching who, who, who might not have heard about what that part of the story really means what what does that mean to the christian believer that jesus died on the cross yes it's 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 right at the heart of the christian faith now and when the christian looks at the cross we don't just see a galilean carpenter dying what we see as we look at the cross is that we see that jesus has gone to the cross and has substituted himself for me so i should be punished for my sin But Jesus says, Rico, I will go and die for your sin in your place. And so 700 years before Christ died in Isaiah 56, there was in Isaiah 53, there were verse six. There was a a, 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 a Isaiah looked ahead to what Jesus would do on the cross. And he says, all we like sheep have gone astray. Each has gone our, our own way. But the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. So as I see the cross, I see Jesus taking my sin and paying for it so that when I stand before God, he looks at me and says, Rico's sin has been paid for because he's trusted in Christ. And indeed, when I take communion and I eat the bread and I drink the wine, I'm saying, this is for me. I'm trusting in what Christ did to die in my place for my sin. Well, uh, one last question for for us to to discuss is... um is this one uh, with COVID restrictions in full swing and with uh, the announcement of a lockdown here in England this week and, and in many parts of the rest of the UK and, and probably around Europe and around the world, what, what does the Christian faith mean to us throughout this particular season personally? Uh, Melinda, how is your Christian faith going to help you face the next six weeks, seven weeks this year? Yeah, that's such a good question. I think for me, it gives me the assurance that this isn't the end of the story. Mm. Um, I think Rika has already been talking about this a little bit, that you know, the worst thing is never the last thing. Um, 
and I, I guess what, what COVID has done, it has showed us how broken this world really is. Um, it, it needs fixed. <laughs> it needs renewed. Um, there is brokenness and suffering. There is sorrow. And what we have in Jesus is the promise of a, of a new world to come. As he, as he dies and as he's raised again, uh, there is the guarantee of a new creation uh, and a renewed and restored world. And can I just say about the, the resurrection? Um, that is one of the most reasonable things to believe about Jesus's life. Um, the most reasonable explanation uh, is that Jesus did rise from the dead. Um, and, if, and if that's true, then this whole world is going to have a different ending than what we, what we, what we ever thought. Um, that there is a new day coming because of his resurrection. Rico, how about you? Well, I, I ask myself some questions at the start of the day to get my day going. And one of the questions I ask myself is this, what, this is my Bible in a year that I, I use. And uh, here's the question, what type of day is today? And I answer it from Romans 8 verse 28 which says that we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who've been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the likeness of his son. What that means is, is that God says in everything, including COVID, he's using that to make me more like Christ. And so I know I'm in a story in which, um, although the, the, the evil of COVID is happening, it doesn't mean that God isn't in control. He was even in control on Good Friday when his son was dying. You can't stop God being God. And what is God doing? Well, God is using COVID and homeschool <laughs> and uh, all the other pressures to, to help me grow more like Christ. Now, that, that um, you know, it, it is a hard experience, but it means that I know what story I'm in. I'm meant to be growing more like Christ. I'd just like to apologize to my family and to my church family and others that I'm not like him. And, you know, I, that's why I desperately need forgiveness. But I, I find tremendous purpose in that, that in everything, he'll be using it to make me more like Christ. So there are only two things in my life. One is, what does it mean to be more like Christ now? Which is a great thrill, but one does so badly and needs forgiveness. The second is, one day I'll, I'll be in the new creation. And, um, you know, say I lose both my legs now as I'm taking my son to the station reshop to get some stuff for homeschool say i say i do that um uh, uh, when i wake up in hospital without legs what i'll know is this one day i'll have new legs in the new creation my job now is what does it mean to be godly to be like christ without legs but can i say that in everything you're therefore doing there's this meaning of trying to grow more like jesus and that um gives me a tremendous sense of purpose yeah, it provides real certainty, doesn't it? That, you know, facing 2021, I'm sure lots of people watching will be thinking, you know, about the, about our health, about our, our jobs, about all sorts of different things that look so much more uncertain in the current climate. I mean, just, just me personally lost a, a very close family member last year, totally unexpectedly. And it just sent that ripple of, of an unexpected shock through, through through our family. And I know... So many people are going through that same thing and having that hope and certainty that God stepped into the world, that Jesus, God's son, came to be born, to die for us and to give us that resurrection hope. That mm. certainty in the face of the uncertainty of this year is, is just so important to, to, to me and, and I know it is to, to, to you as well. Well, talking about the, the Christian hope that we have, Rico, you're leading a new course on Monday evening. Um, could you tell us a little bit more about it? How can people join if they want to explore the Christian faith further? Yeah, it's been amazing to have people join us online. So we have um, leaders, we have groups, we have a talk that I, I give, and it's called Hope Explored because we are really wanting to think about Christian hope. Now, unashamedly, we're looking at the person of Jesus, but here's the issue. We'd love people to ask whatever question they like. So we've just had a few minutes knocking around questions now, but we'd love to get to know you better and, and do that. So people can come on the course. Um, we have a bit of input about the person of Christ, actually beginning 700 years before in the prophecies of Isaiah. So there's some historical stuff to negotiate. 
and then we uh, we, we we do some bible study and we just love you to ask whatever question you like and we have people coming from every direction and every walk of life so um uh, so yeah please join us see how you go with week one as we look at the person of christ and we see whether we can find hope in him and whether it's really secure you know so faith is three things often it's information you agree with that information and then you act upon it and it's those those three things information meaning and assent well well come and see where you are um with hope and uh with the person of christ thanks rico and um if people want to uh, attend the course on monday or find out more all you have to do is visit allsouls.org slash explore and if you're watching this in 10, 20 years time, we don't know how long this will be on YouTube for, but if you are watching this sometime in the future, then um, you can visit the website that we put in the description below, um, which is the Christianity Explored website. And on there you can find courses running all around the world in a church, hopefully near you. So do, do reach out and uh, find out more that way. Well, Melinda and Rico, it's been lovely to um, have you with us this morning and to, um, chat about all these different questions that people have sent in. Um, do click subscribe to our channel below to um, continue to watch uh, musical videos and things like this in the coming year. We'd love to keep in touch with you. Um, but for now, to end our Q&A time today, we have a, a wonderful song by singer-songwriter Stuart Townend called Forever Jesus. And uh, Stuart writes uh, this, th these beautiful words about hope in Jesus in the face of everything that you could face in life, the good and the bad. And um, this was recorded at All Souls in uh, 2020 with members of the All Souls Orchestra. Let's uh, hear Stuart take it away. shall be forever Jesus my firm foundation in shifting sands my strength and hope through many fears and failures the disappointments of the past his constant love has held me fast So for all my days, I will sing my praise to the King forever, Jesus. Though the storms may rage, He is strong to save. He's the King forever, Jesus. My song of joy shall be forever Jesus Who bore the suffering, who made a way His life a gift, His death a precious ransom That wipes the sinner's guilt away And turns our night to glory So for all my days I will sing my praise to the King forever, Jesus. Though the storms may rage, He is strong to save. He's the
breath shall be forever Jesus when shadows lengthen before my eyes my Lord and friend companion through the valley when dearest ones are left behind his hand will lead me to the light so for all my days I will sing my praise to the King forever Jesus though the storms may rage he is strong to past I am 